Hi, friends. So excited to see you today. Uh, we are going to just be painting. I've decided we're going to paint some cherries today. So I did these last night. I don't know. Straw cherries, berry cherries. I don't know. They kind of look like cherries, right? Um, I had fun with them and I thought, well, that's cheerful. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. But of course, today is actually truly a celebration of my new brushes. As you know, I can't stop talking about them. The Free From Fear brush collection, which so many of you have picked up and many of you are already getting. If you're here, uh, Team Replay, we love you. Um, who knows? Maybe you're watching this a year from now and you're like, old news. But it's okay, stick around because what's not old news is putting brush to paper, no matter what brush it is, no matter what paper it is, and making some fantastic, joyful artwork. And that is really what today is all about. So for our live viewers, we are going to be just having some fun. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, you know you never know with me, right? Uh, we do have Kelly here today, hallelujah and amen, because... Alive without Kelly is not quite as smooth, right? So everybody uh, get into comments and give Kelly some love. And you know what? If you're feeling generous, I know I haven't started painting yet, but if you if you get value from this channel, if you feel like you've made some strides from this channel, the community here, um, the teaching here, uh, would you go ahead and give this video a boop? And friends, a boop is a like. It's a little thumbs up. I don't know if you can boop on the TV, but you certainly can on your uh, computer or on your phone. And so it really helps out the channel. Let's take a look at who's here today. We have Virginia um, from Georgia. We have, uh, we oh my gosh, we have so many. Judith, hello, hello, Monique. First time live, Monique, woohoo! I'm so glad you're here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> We've got Justine from Michigan. We've got hope. Woohoo! Here we go. Jeanette, so glad to see you here. Creekside Homeschoolers back again. Woo! Hey, Sarah, first timer. I see you. I see you. Um, Lion, Lion's Hair Heart got uh, her brushes last Wednesday. I know some of y'all were like serious. You were like on the Amazon. You were stalking Big A and you found those brushes before they were actually even like launched. So good for you, good for you. All right, let's get down to the painting table and let's let's just get this ball rolling because I mean, this is where it's at. You're not here to look at my face, right? Right, you're not here to look at my face. You're here to look at the art, okay? So for whatever reason lately, <clears throat> I've been feeling very much like I wanna paint big. I don't know why. Friends, I am going to use the Free From Fear brush collection today, but I'm going to go ahead and pop in the, the new travel brush that, uh, little secret, little secret is coming sooner than we thought. Um, as early as next week, I might be getting that bad boy up on the big A. So you're going to have to keep an eye out for that one. It's probably going to be more of like a surprise launch situation. So pretty excited about it. All right, so why don't we take a look <clears throat> at the brushes. I want to talk about them individually as we're getting started here. So this is the It's Just Paper brush, friends, and that's your three-quarter inch dagger. A couple of things I love about this brush. It holds a ton of water, a ton of paint. Whatever you put on it, it's going to hold a lot of it, right? It's got this big sweeping curve, just like any of my other daggers, right? But it's just bigger. Bigger's better, right? Okay. And of course, you still got your point. You can do so much with this. Uh, I painted a hydrangea with uh, almost the entire hydrangea with this brush recently. Um, after the live is through, I'll go ahead and pop that link down in the description so you can watch that if you haven't seen it yet. Just fantastic, unbelievable. So big sweeping strokes, teeny tiny strokes, all the strokes. You're going to get all the strokes with this brush. You'll be shocked at what you can do. I'm actually like frantically flipping through um, one of my sketchbooks where I did a bunch of brush drills with um, 
with these brushes. And of course I can't find them as I'm, like I said, frantically flipping through. I wasn't kind of prepared to show them to you, but now I really, really want to. There they are. I found them. I've got to show you these brush drills, y'all, that I did. Now these, you'll see these in depth um, in the exclusive video that I have prepared for anyone who has purchased the brushes. That QR code in the bottom left-hand corner, you can just scan that with your, with your camera app on your phone and it's going to take you right where you need to be. All right. Let's actually go ahead and get this Academy pad out of here. We'll, we'll come back to you, love. Don't worry. Don't worry. But let's take a looky-loo here. Okay, so look at what you can do with this brush, all right? This is just a, a, just a hint of what you can do with this brush. Friends, you know what? This is not something I would normally do in the middle of the live, but my brain today is not feeling the absolute madness of this paint-spattered backdrop. So we're gonna change it. I mean, it's pretty, There's, look at, I like write little notes here. Like you see this, like I write notes, but that there comes a time when it needs to be flipped. It needs to be flipped. And so we need, we need a clean surface. Isn't that better? That's better. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. That is just better. I'm gonna come down a little bit. All right, all right, okay. Brush drills, look at sweeping strokes. And what I love too about this brush, friends, is what it does when um, you're sweeping the brush across the page, right? And um, it just is like moving and grooving the pigments. And sometimes you get really interesting like granulation or something that appears to be granulation when you're least expecting it. So I do love that about this brush. All right, so friends, next up, what did I do next with these drills? Uh, the number 12 round, she's a beaut, she's a beaut. And I'm trying to remember what I did with that brush drill. Let me see, I think it's this. Yes, yes, yes. Look it. Okay, so round brushes are kind of the staple, right? Round brushes are the staple. But here's the thing. I, I have a pretty strong opinion about them. If they don't come to a really impressive point, I say, what's the point, right? Um, so I designed this round brush to come to a point when it's wet, you're going to see this. Oh, this is not a clean brush. Girlfriend, clean your brushes. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, let's really have a looky-loo here. Look at that point. It comes to a, a, a it, it, it happens pretty quickly, but that point is so fine. The detail that you can get with this brush is insane. So I, I, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. I'm actually thinking of designing a new brush and I've always got ideas. I've always got ideas. Um, but I'm thinking of designing a round that has an even more elongated. Yeah, I just, I feel it in my soul. Anyway, so here are the brush drills. Look at what you can do with this bad boy. You've got the basic strokes, right? Your press, drag, and lifts here. You've got all of the stuff. But then look at the thin stuff you can do. The press and lifts that you can do. And then, like, this was one stroke here. These, like, petal-like shapes. One stroke. I mean, come on, just such good fun. All right, let's get on to our Filbert. The Filbert is the dive right in brush. Oh, and by the way, friends, the number 12 round is better known as the creative rebel, right? Right, we're all creative rebels here. All right, the Filbert, let's see which, which one is the Filbert? I think maybe, it, I don't know, this one. Here's the Filbert. And remember, friends, when you purchase these brushes, make sure you keep your packaging. The back of the brush card has a QR code that is going to lead you to this lesson. It is like 56 minutes long, all right? You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Lisa says, I'm in love with Christie's palette, included access to a great video, great swatching ideas. 
shows how many colors can come from one palette. Thank you. Ordered the new brushes and can't wait. Thanks, Kelly, popping that lovely, lovely complimentary comment up there on the screen. Really appreciate that so much. Oh my gosh, Creekside Homeschoolers just ordered a second palette. And friends, by the way, <coughs> the palette after a big A hiatus is now back on. Um, but honestly, we kept it rolling on ChristyRice.com. Kristen, our shop manager, is so swamped with orders of the palette. So if you ordered your palette while it was not on Big A for, for a month, you ordered it from ChristyRice.com, please be patient with us and know that you're going to get a little free surprise in your box when it does come. Okay, so what I love about a Filbert, Filbert is it's it's got some resistance to it. It's one of the stiffer brushes in this collection. And it's got this lovely, just easy curve and nice wide body, right? So you get all the gorgeous press and lifts. Think berries, think, you know, like um, zinnia petals. Think, um, even think like some like hedges in a landscape, right? Right? So just so fun. Um, and then, of course, elongated strokes. You can actually get really structural strokes like these here. Letting the paint run out while you're using a filbert, you're going to get some incredible um, texture showing through, um, like a dry brush effect. Just lovely. Oh, Jess Butterfly. Maybe, maybe I'll have to give you guys a little sneak peek today if I can figure out <clears throat> how to do it. Um, uh Hey, Kel, can you ask Katie to give us a screenshot of the new palette designs that maybe we can somehow, uh, you know what? I'll have to see how I could do this. You know what, friends? Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Never mind, Kel. Don't, don't bother Katie. She's super busy. Um, friends, later today on Instagram, in my Instagram stories, and you can follow me on Instagram at Christy the Painter. I'm going to go ahead and reveal a little surprise about empty palettes. We are releasing two empty palettes. They each are going to hold um, about 12 full pans or 24 half pans, actually a little more if you use the middle row. And um, we are doing them in two different patterns, both floral. I've decided, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm indulging my floral love, both floral. And um, each of them is going to have their own inspirational mantra, of course. So anyway, thank you for asking that fun question. Super excited. <clears throat> okay. So the Filbert, the dive right in brush, I forgot to mention, like, I just am always so shocked at when you use cert certain brush shapes, let's just, you know, let's just remove the, the idea of a classic round, right? We all know how to use, or we often start with a classic round. But the thing I love about, let's call them like specialty shape brushes, stroke brush and do press and lift or press drag and lift and, and boom, you've got a pedal, right? Boom. But then when you start using them more like you would use a round brush where you're creating multiple strokes to create a shape, to create shadow, what starts to happen, it's just like compound wow. Compound wow. It's like, just incredible. So like I did a little bit of that here, did a little bit of that here where I was, I wasn't just doing a one stroke action right here. I was doing several strokes together, but with the specialty filbert and you get some of the most incredible, interesting shapes. All right, moving on to the find your weird brush, our number six cat's tongue. Friends, I am having a love affair. Sorry. The quarter inch dagger is just going to have to take a seat for a moment because I am having a love affair. <clears throat> we designed this, this cat's tongue quite differently from the original cat's tongue in the first set. I'm going to show you a comparison. Trust me, friends, if you're here watching on replay, we are going to be painting. I promise. I promise. But this is really good information to know what brush, when, and how, and why, right? right? Let me know in comments if you agree, if this is helpful, knowing kind of the characteristics of the brushes and does that help inform how you might use them. All right, here's the original, the watercolor Curious Cat's Tongue. It's a number one cat's tongue. By design, it comes to more of a blunt point. So it's a soft point, right? 
<coughs> excuse me, the find your weird cat's tongue was designed with a very elongated point. And this comes to a point that rivals my liner brush point. But what you can create between the thickness, the widest part of this brush, and the point of this brush is absolute, absolutely exciting. I just can't even get enough. All right, let's take a look at, I'm trying to see, was this, all right, this was the eighth inch, and then this must have been, sorry, y'all, I'm working, working myself out here. Wait, how many brushes do I have left to do? Oh, no, this was this. No, this was, oh, my Lord. Okay, this is the cat's tongue, all right? So you can see, unlike any of the other brushes in the set, look at the just the sheer absolute variety of marks that you're getting with this brush. You've got your classic press drag and lift. You've got your zigzags. You've got your elongated strokes. But look at, you use the side of it. You use the tip of it. You use the very, very point held with a perpendicular hold, right? I mean, you just can't. Let's take a look at comments here for a minute, friends, while I let you soak this in. Elizabeth says, there we go. Kelly, you and I are like the same brain sometimes because I was just about to start reading Elizabeth's comment and you popped it up on screen. She says, you're new to YouTube, uh, new to your YouTube and social media. You have truly excited me to paint again. What exactly is the product name for your watercolor paints? Amazon is very confusing. Amen and hallelujah. Let me explain. The actual name of the palette is the Art for Joy Sake palette. However, Amazon, because of the way that Amazon, it's like a search engine, right? So you can't just search art, the Art for Joy Sake palette. You just can't. It, it's most likely not going to come up. Um, because that name to Amazon does means nothing, right? So um, you, you're going to find it when you search watercolor paint set. You're going to find it if you, you might get this. You might find it if you search Christy Rice. Maybe. Sometimes not. The best bet is to head in the, into the description here of this video and any video of mine on YouTube. And you're going to see a link for the Art for Joy Sake palette. That's the best way to get to it, honestly. It, but it is. Amazon runs like a search engine. Therefore, every listing is designed like it's being like it's catering to that search engine, if that makes sense. Um, all right, let's look at any other questions that we have here. <clears throat> Your samples should color coordinate with the brush color, hint, hint. Um, actually, they do, but in the listing photos, you'll have to go take a look. Um, yeah, I would never, oh my gosh, that's, so great. Lisa says, I would never use the brushes to their full potential unless I watch these informational recordings. Well, thank you so much. Okay, Julietta, Canada, we are having some issues. I'm not sure what's going on in Canada. We are getting tons of reports that folks cannot find the listing in Canada. We are working on that. Trust me, like we are, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on, but we're working hard on that one, friends. I promise, I promise. Um, but we, we don't quite have it figured out yet. All right, friends, last two brushes. Let's look at these because I want to get into the painting. Team Replay, if you're still here with us, give us a hey. Give us a hello. Give us a what's up. Give us a come on, get to the painting already. We want to hear from you. All right, Making Magic is our triple zero, friends. Teeny tiny. She's going to give you more control than the liner brush in the first set. We'll just give you a look at that for comparison's sake. Two very, very different brushes. Um, this one's going to give you more lyrical, the liner here, the blue one, more lyrical, whimsical, um, think long, undulating tendrils. This one's going to give you uh, really fine lines, but better for more texture and more tight and detailed work. All right. And then friends, we have, I'm just going to put this on the holder so it doesn't fly away. And by the way, this one is called the Making Magic Brush. All right. All right. Love that. Next up, we have the eighth inch dagger. Um, love, look at the variety, depending on the pressure, 
depending on how much water is on your brush. Look at what you can do. So friends, one of the first things that I recommend you do when you first get these brushes is to do some drills because number one, it's fun. And number two, it really, really quickly informs you to what your brushes can do. All right, let's get into the painting here. I am gonna use the Art for Joy's Sake palette. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use uh, exclusively the brushes from the Free From Fear, except for I may pop in the travel brush. And then I'm going big, big for me, which is this uh, 10 by 15 Academy. All right. All right. And I did, this is a piece from an earlier live. I'll go ahead and link that below. Um, after this live is done, if you want to see how this unfolded, this was also done with all the same supplies I just mentioned. All right, let's get this one cut off the block and get to it. Keep your questions coming in friends. Let me know. Is there anyone here that has received the brush set and already tried it out, already used it? I would love to know. And I'm sure everybody else would. What's your favorite brush so far? Um, if you've been playing around with it, we'd love to know. <clears throat> okay. Like I said, friends, we're going to do some cherries. I feel like going vertical. All right. We're going to spray our palette down again. I sprayed it earlier, but it needs some more. Get that going. All of the supplies will be listed eventually. <laughs> eventually down in the description. If you're watching on replay, they should be there for you. And if they're not, you need to come and yell at me. All right. All right. All right. Friends, I, um, this cute little, um, I just have to show you something, um, because I am working on a video right now. And if you're watching on replay, it may have already happened, but I am working on a video where I am, uh, using rating just chatting and making art with 11 different handmade watercolor brands and uh, masha's watercolors sent me you got to see this you're gonna you're gonna hear my voice go into the distance because i had to get up to get this but masha sent me and i'm sorry is the artist is the the designer's name actually masha i don't know but look at what she sent me and i will get to that question so she sent me this to try out look at this it's a ceramic palette pre-filled with all her granulating watercolors and the coordinating brush rest. So you're going to see these making an appearance video coming up, or it may be already, already be, um, be up if you're watching on replay. Okay. The question <clears throat> I've had my brushes for over a week. Okay. Yaconia, I got to just say you gave the most incredible review. That was you, right? Where you painted the, the poppies, the poppy, poppy tutorial and shared shared the artwork and I know you sent it to me in DM as well. Um, so she says for over a week and my favorite is the making magic because I love doing the fine detail stuff. Love it. So I appreciate you so much. You have no idea how much. All right, let's get into it. Just a reminder of where we're headed with these cherries. I did these last night just as I was losing light. And we're gonna we're gonna play around with this effect. Got the brushes and tried them out. So far, my favorites are the three quarter dagger and the round. Oh, that three quarter dagger, y'all! All right, I've been having fun with sketching with my paintbrush lately. So I'm just kind of grabbing some dingy whatnot <clears throat> from my palette. I'm going big. I'm going big with the cherries today, and I've just been having a blast. I am using the number six. I'm using the travel brush. I have been having such a blast sketching with my brush. And I do have that video where I actually was sketching the kawaii um, critters and different things. And that's where I kind of introduced this sketching with your paintbrush idea. Um, so fun. I would love for you to try it. And you guessed it. I will link that below so you can take a look at it later on don't go there now because it's not there right now all right so i am perpendicular hold really far down on this brush and i'm just roughing out these cherries a little bit a lot bit larger than life I and mean, we're talking like 40 percent larger than life right so fun oh my gosh keep your questions coming friends um 
I can't wait to get my paws uh, on these brushes. Yes, so good. And who cares if some of these cherries are bigger than others and that doesn't really make sense in the natural world. Uh, I don't care. I just want to make fun looking stuff that's like, you know, exciting and whatever, right? That's what I'm here for. That's what we're all here for. Friends, stick around for our live crew. We're going to have some fun giveaways coming up here soon. So we don't want you to miss out on that. And you never know what I'm actually going to give away. You really never know. I mean, who knows? Who knows what it's going to be? I got some smaller cherries coming. Let's do Let's do like one more really big one here to kind of ground this, right? <clears throat> All right, that's looking good. Um, Deb, are both sets only available on Amazon in the U.S.? Yes, um, unless Amazon's giving us some kind of trouble and like they were with our palette, then we will go ahead and switch to ChristyRice.com. Um, but yeah, typically, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the three quarter inch dagger. I wet this cherry here and I'm going to go ahead, need more pigment, more paint on that brush and I'm dabbing. All right. And I'm going to do a little dab a do down here using just the tip of this brush. Little dab, a little dab. Actually not dabbing anymore. I'm like carving, right? All right, a little bit of pink, I, I pink, I think, a little bit of pink, I think, and I'm flooding that pink through, and I'm just going to leave that, I'm going to let that sit. <clears throat> These will absolutely handle gouache, I've been using them with gouache for over a year, I've got a gouache video coming up that you're going to, not going to want to miss, um, I'm pretty sure it's going to go live um, next Monday. Um, as of this recording, that's what, I don't know. What is that? The 20th of March, maybe. Um, so you don't want to miss that. All right. Just pushing some of this pink on here and then a little red. The idea with these cherries when I was painting them yesterday was just to do some really fun, somewhat controlled wet on wet. And, and that's it. That, that was my goal. That was my goal. So I'm taking a clean-ish brush and I'm going over top, letting some white show through. I went at first with this brush, I was using the full width of it and then I twisted it and I used just the tip of it. Now I'm grabbing the red on the tip of the brush and I'm just dabbing and letting it go and I'm pushing it up towards that upper left corner of the cherry and watching it come down and it's creating such lovely effects. And I'm going to go up here into the, where the red is the strongest and I'm going to keep kind of pushing. It's like you're bullying the paint around and you're getting some really interesting effects and just let it go. See what happens. See what happens. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to keep moving around here. Now, some of these, I, I'm thinking like, I want some peach tones. So I'm going right into my palette with the peach. The peach is definitely an opaque watercolor. So it's going to give you a different vibe. Now here I'm going in heavy wet on dry just for a more of a variety of, of textures here on the page. Going right into this one and letting the pink kind of run into the peach. And then let's go in really heavy application of the paint here. And that's kind of a classic, Christy. I like to see what watercolors do using more traditional techniques, but very non-traditional application of paint. Yeah. Who doesn't love giant cherries, right? Right. Elizabeth, adore your palette, bought an extra one. Well, I appreciate that so much. And I feel that in my soul because right now I have seven of my own palettes that I rotate and that I work with daily. So, you know, can never have too many can never have too many. All right, let's do this. I think we need a little, little purple up here, a little purple right here where the stem is going to meet. Same thing here, just a little, little something. 
a little bit here. All right, moving on. Pink, look at that pink travel. Let it travel. I'm just dabbing. I'm just dabbing. Now I'm going to carve with the tip of this three quarter inch. Let the white spots be where they happen. Look at that perfect little white spot that happened. If you feel like it's traveling too much, go ahead and blot your brush and then do a little lifting. This is this is positive lifting. We aren't correcting a mistake here, friends. We're creating a texture, right? All right, I'm going to switch to the number 12 round and just do some fun greenery. I'm going to go ahead and spray down these mixing trays. This is moving around like crazy today. All right, I'm going to get in here in this like ivory color and just kind of reactivate the greens that were already in here. I love adding this ivory color to now friends i make a habit of not calling out color names even my own color names um if you gave me a hundred dollars right now i don't even think i could remember the name of this ivory color because <laughs> i so not uh, so often i don't call out color names yes um i did link the spray bottle virginia from yesterday's i'm pretty sure i did at least all right we're gonna do some just straight up Press, drag, and lift, friends, okay? And we're going to do a downstroke here from the tip of this kind of roughed in stem. So press, drag, start lifting, start lifting, but it's a slow lift, a little twist at the end. I'm going to grab a little bit of a different green. I'm going to do an upstroke. Press, drag, start lifting, start lifting, and twist. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? the simplicity all right press drag and lift that's a quick press drag and lift let it run into some of the cherries because they're damp and they're going to give you some really cool effects watch this i'm going to start my press right on top of this cherry press drag lift and a little twist okay and then another one here so pretty let the green be kind of sheer and ethereal because your cherries are just wild, right? Full of color, full of intensity. But I like the idea of, I'm gonna add a stem here, a little cherry stem. I like the idea of the leaves being that contrast, right? And then I bumped it into the purple. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes, keep your questions coming, friends. Um, <clears throat> random question from, um, I'm gonna get it wrong. I've been saying Sama, Sama, from Sama. Random question, I'm sitting here painting wooden eggs. Have you painted eggs with watercolor, with watercolor ground, or would you do a video? I have not painted wooden eggs specifically with watercolor ground. However, I have painted wooden slices, like wood slices for ornaments, and I do have a video about that. Um, Kelly will go ahead and make a note, and I will make sure to link that video below um after the live is through so you can take a look at it for sure press slow drag starting to lift and i'm letting it dry brush even right there right isn't that nice love that all right let me see where other areas are damp that i could kind of run into them and get that cool effect maybe oh there's too much water on that brush you know how you can tell if there's too much water on your brush? One of the key ways is if you've got your brush going and you've got a bubble forming, you probably can't see this, but there is a straight up, I don't wanna, yeah, you can't see this, but there's a bubble forming on the edge of this brush. That's too much water in most, in most situations, all right? It's just too much water. <clears throat> okay. Let's get some color on these bad boys. Let's go ahead and wet this down first. Um, I wanna add a little bit of fluorescent yellow. I know you're gonna think I'm insane. And I'm gonna just add a touch of the fluorescent yellow right in here, just a hint of it. Cause we're gonna layer later and that's gonna kind of get softened, but I think it's gonna be interesting. I also love what's happening because I sketched in with this muddy, very, light color you're seeing some of those outlines and i just think that's so incredibly interesting i don't know what do you think let me know 
Um, Marie. Marie says, so remember your you do you boo for the life of me can't do press drag and lift, but can paint, draw them out and fill them in. There you go. There you go. You do you boo. That's right. That's right. And Jennerini, Yeah. She, she, is that her stuff? Is that her shtick? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I am aware of her very well aware, but I don't know if that's her shtick. Leaves with Christie's daggers are so easy. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. And I said your name right. Woo. Okay. Um, Miragold says, Hey peeps, I have a question about whether you'll be getting more stock of the new brush set on your website for international sale as they're sold out already and Amazon won't ship to the UK. Yes, we will be. Um, I already did a, a reorder of the free from fear brushes like on Tuesday or it might've been Monday. It was crazy. I've never reordered so quickly in my life. Um, and when that reorder comes in, we will also be restocking on ChristyRice.com for international. So yep, no worries there. All right. I'm going to put a stem in here. Perpendicular hold, perpendicular hold and boom. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get some peach in here. Lots of water on my brush right now. And I'm just letting that peach kind of float in, in and around, sometimes on top of the yellow. And then I'm going to go right over here with a little bit of red and drag it kind of following the shape I've made. Cause I like the shape I've made and it's not exploding because there's actually so much water on this particular cherry but it's kind of like swirling. It's almost like marbling, you know, that's the kind of feel. So it's interesting. You have to have the right amount of water on your paper and for, for you to get that, the blooming or the explosions of watercolor. And it's so interesting that sometimes when you have like puddles, you don't get the explosions The the paint just kind of sits on top of the puddles, which can be super interesting as well. So nothing wrong with that, but it's so interesting. Watercolor is, she's so curious. She's so curious. I'm just going to get a little more structure into this one here. And also <clears throat> into this one, I'm just kind of filling in that little concave area where the stem sets into the top of the cherry. Give that a little more dimension, right? Do a little bit of that here. All right. And gosh, I just love the look of this simple, like one color. And I know I added water to that and never did anything with it. Or did I not? Maybe I didn't add water to this one. I don't remember. Another peachy moment. And then let's do a little dab of red in the middle and just see what happens. Let her go. Let her go. Maybe a little water. Little, oh, look at that. Look at that. So pretty. Let her go. Let her go. Don't fuss. Let her go and see what happens. All right. More question. That green reminds me of the sweet plant lamb's ear. Yeah, definitely. It's got like that dusty Miller type of vibe. Um, yes, Brenda, we've been having trouble with the Canadian Amazon. We don't know what's going on. Normally it should be showing up. We don't know why it's not, but we are working on it. I promise. I promise. All right. I'm going, I'm wetting this cherry with, um, with color instead of just clean water. And then we'll go ahead and go over top with something else for a little bit of wet on wet action. So remember you can do wet on wet. It doesn't have to always be with clean water first can be with color. I've got some really cool happy accident dry brush areas that I am very carefully leaving because they're so cool. Love that. I love that white spot. I'm not convinced I need to cover it up yet. Maybe a little stroke here, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that I need to fully cover that up. This is so fun. All right, a few more leaves. 
I'm going to just go right in with the, the ivory color. Press, drag, curve, and lift. I bumped it into that cherry there to get some cool effects. So much so, I want to do it again. Oh, look at that. Ooh. All right, get out of there before I overdo it. But I like this ivory vibe. And you don't just have have to have like two leaves per cherry. No, you can do more leaves. Who knows what these cherries have been hanging out with, right? They could be in a bouquet. I don't know. Maybe they're still hanging off a branch in a bouquet. Yeah. Brushes are definitely more on the stiff side um, in terms of, you know, they're made from nylon. And so if you compared them to like um, the black, the, what is it? Black velvet definitely stiffer than that. Um, very similar to like, um, what is it? The, is it Princeton or hold on? What are they called? Very similar to the, um, Neptune, Princeton Neptune feel, I believe. Let me double check that. I actually have them here, but I want to double check that. It's been a while. Oh no. They're more stiff than that. Nope. They're more stiff than the Neptune. They have a snap, um, but they still hold a lot. Yeah. I would love kumquat size cherries. Yes. There are, okay. So in this new set, there are two daggers, the eighth inch and the three quarter. And then in the original set, there's the quarter inch and the half. So there's actually now four daggers, friends. Yeah. Oh, Gaconia says they complement the silver black velvet very nicely. I, that makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. All right, I'm going to just flood a little bit of green in here to this leaf. Just And it's getting very opaque, but I'm okay with that. Just a little bit of green. Yeah. Yeah, look at what's happening up here. It's a really good idea to take a moment when you're kind of this far along in a painting to just breathe, to close your eyes for a few minutes. That's what I'm, I'm literally closing my eyes right now. Big breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. I know this is not a yoga channel, but seriously, refresh your eyes, take a sip of something, caffeine, whatever, and then bring your eyes back to your painting and take a mindful moment to observe some things that you love. I am going to do that right now. And I'm going to lower this camera a little bit. Okay. Cause I want to talk about it. I am having a love moment right here. This intersection of this leaf, some of the blooming, the cauliflower effect that happened. You bet your butt, I am leaving that solid and confident right where it is. I love the cauliflower effect. I love it. I don't mind it. I, I'm there for it. There's some very interesting contrast of textures and paint, um, paint application happening there. Love. Oh my gosh, right here where I booped right that leaf right next to that cherry and she bled some of that pink into the green and the cauliflower in the next leaf. Can you give it an amen or whatever type of exclamation feels right for you? I mean, seriously. Okay, friends, this is not an example of me having an ego. You know what this is an example of and I'm doing it on purpose. This is the example of the kind of self-talk that I want you to practice for yourself, to yourself when you're in the middle of a painting experience, okay? That's what I want for you. That's what I want for you. Jess asked if I can show the palette to the new people here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, give me one sec and then another moment that I am loving, there's actually two more. I love the peach area here. It looks like the sun is just dappling through this bouquet of cherries. Yes, there can be a bouquet of cherries. And I love that. I'm gonna try to maintain that. And see, another benefit of taking a moment to really evaluate what you've got going on is you can decide what you wanna change, what you wanna keep, and what you wanna do more of. Let's repeat that. Evaluate your painting after you've rested your eyes for a, a few moments, after you've taken a sip of something to refresh your body, after you've taken a deep breath, you want to see what you like. What did I say? What you love, what you want to keep, what you want to change, and what you want to do more of. 
that's probably the best thing you could take from today's live, even though we're still here and we're still painting and I'm not going anywhere, but seriously. Mm. All right, friends, let's take a look at this palette. This is the Making Art for Joy's Sake palette. She is my heart, my love. Um, actually, I'm not going to show you this one because this was a return. Literally, somebody it looked like they ran it over. Like, look at, look at how bent she is. But it was a return. I have all returns and we don't get many. Like, seriously, if we get two returns a month, it's a lot, which is such an honor. But I have them all sent to me because you know what? Do you ever get a product from Amazon? This is a tangent. But you ever get a product from Amazon that's just not right and you feel like somebody's had it before? Well, they probably have. So a lot of what happens is people re will return stuff. Amazon will evaluate it and put it back into inventory if they feel it's acceptable. That doesn't happen with Christy Rice. No. All the returns come back to me. And um, I have never sent one back into inventory because you know what? People use these palettes sometimes and they try to clean them up and make them look like they didn't use them or they run them over with their car apparently. Like, look at this poor thing. Um, one, one brush set came back. I think they just took the brushes that they really wanted and sent it back and got, got a refund. It's fine. It happens so rarely. I'm okay with it. If, if that's what they needed to do in their life, that's fine. Anywho, enough of that. <clears throat> so it's your classic travel tin style. And what I mean by classic is this, this kind of travel tin style has been around forever. It's got your finger ring. So if you're like out painting on the go, you can hold on to your palette. I never use it. I hate it. I thought about removing it. People told me not to. So we kept it. It's got my cute little logo on the back. There's me. And that design goes all around all edges. There is not another palette on the market like this. I've seen um, like Schmenka does a palette that looks like it has a watercolor wash on it. Jane Tav Davenport has an aqua version. Um, Mei Ling has an aqua version, but it's not a full palette with the flap. No one yet, I'm the first, is doing floral patterns in this style of tin. So um, super proud of that. Okay, this is one of my older ones. Well loved. Um, got some magnets inside. <laughs> I was making a palette with something else. Okay. Inside, well, this one I'm not going to show you because it is so, like, the, the little tray inside is so well loved and used. I don't think I'm going to get it out. And girl doesn't clean her palettes. All right, here we go. This comes out, so you could actually pull it out and have more mixing space, right? This comes out, and I made this rose gold. She's rose gold. Isn't that fun? It's more like pink gold, but whatever. Um, if we ever reorder these, we're going to adjust that color because I wasn't really thrilled with that. And I wanted the whole thing to be rose gold, but whatever. Um, 12 colors, highly curated, 12 colors, friends. Um, they have been called strange. They've been called shocking people. Many people don't understand at first glance why I did what I did, why I chose what I chose, why I organized them the way I did. But all I'm going to tell you is this. You're going to be able to mix the brightest of brights. Oh, I got myself a little happy accident there. You see that happy accident? I don't know where that came from, but it happened and I'm okay with it. We're going to just deal with it. Um, I know what happened. So I'm going to do this to prevent it from happening again. Mm -hmm. My husband just walked in here and said hello. And I'm like, no, no, bye-bye. Um, okay. So what was I saying? You can mix the brightest of brights with this, or you can just grab the brightest of brights because there's lots of zingy colors in here. I might, might I remind you that this was painted with this palette exclusively, right? But then when you start mixing, when you start mixing, you can get some crazy, beautiful earthiness out of this palette. So uh, there she is. There she is. We love her. We're proud of her. We're grateful for all the love that you've shown her over the last year. Honestly, it hasn't even been a year. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, she launched in June. So it'll be a year in June. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, the happy accident. I'm going to probably do more of the more happy accident, accidenting here to cover up that little scuff. Um, but yeah, what do I want to do next? What do I want to do next? I don't know. I want to pull out the cat's tongue. That I know. Sometimes 
in your painting life, friends, you're not going to know. And don't, instead of letting that not knowing stress you out, the like, oh, I don't know what to do next. Just, just make a smaller decision. I didn't know what I wanted to paint right in that moment. So I made a smaller decision. I chose a brush, right? Let's get some bigger leaves going here. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Um, with the cat's tongue, watch, watch, press, drag, and lift in a little curve as I'm lifting. Grab another color, go right next to it, press, drag, and lift. I'm going to go off the page, and there we go. Grab another color, press, drag, lift, curve. Ooh, I like it. A little bit of blue for shadow, not enough blue for shadow. Perpendicular hold way down on the brush. Let's keep those questions coming. Thank you for being here, Mary. Thank you for being here. Um, oh my gosh, Karen McKay, your hydrangeas are popping. I'm jealous. I've been recommending your palette as a split mixing palette because you get so much out of it mixing wise. They all play together seriously. Chef's kiss perfection. Um, I'm going to take a screenshot of that right now because um, I just love that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, thought, let's just say that, went into this palette. Okay, can we just talk about the shell pink? Take that shell pink and mix it with this emeraldy green here. Oh, it's luscious. It's luscious, and now I'm going to paint with it so you can see why it's luscious, okay? I want to keep that area golden, so I'm going to stay away. I wish I would. I'm going to do something there. This is how I really sound when I start talking to myself. Press, drag, and lift. Look at that lovely creamy green that it produces. Look at that. Mm. All right. Now, remember I said I wanted to keep this area golden, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to glaze, drop a little bit of peach. Ooh, I'm going to drop more. I like just dropping it. I was going to brush, I was going to stroke that, but maybe I'll stroke it now. Drag it down. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh, <gasps> pretty, pretty, slightly dingy, but pretty. I'm there for it. All right. What do I want to do? I want to use my eighth inch dagger. Um, and Kelly, while I'm doing this, I'm going to start some filler greens. I want you to think of a way that we can do our first giveaway. Think of it, think of it. What can we do? All right, let's just do some press and lift action with the eighth inch dagger because trust me, it's so fun. I'm going to hold this as perpendicular to the page as possible. I'm holding it far out so I get more rotation option here. And I'm going, or I'm not perpendicular, hi, parallel. And I'm going to press and lift, press and lift. I'm thinking about a swag, a little vine, press and lift, let the paint run out. It's okay. All right. Reload on the other side, change the angle of your hand, press and lift, change the angle of your hand again, press and lift. There's no drag here, friends, press and lift. Let's do one final one. There you go. Don't worry about a stem right now. We'll get a stem in there. Not worried about it over here. Press and lift. Now this time I'm holding it the, the curved side down instead of like this. I'm holding it like this. Okay. Press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. I'm kind of curving as I go. Those marks are getting smaller or shorter, if you will, as I go. Press and lift, press and lift. And a final one. Let's do more of that. Where do I want? I want to do some golden ones. Let's do a peachy one. All right. And we're going to Press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. Boom. Add a little extra up here. A little extra in there. Gorgeous. The peach mixed with the fluorescent. Fire. Fire. It's like a creamy, zingy, really like sunny yellow. Mm, so good. Okay. Let's do another one here. Let's do longer. We're going to do a little drag. Drag, drag, reload often with this one, drag. So it's a press, drag, and lift, but the same idea. 
of creating like this like swag effect. And we're going to go right over that luscious green that we just did that I was raving about. I like that so much. I'm going to add some of, actually, I'm going to put some of this yellow in here just to liven a little, little sparkle there. All right. I'm going to just be, do a few little filler strokes here. Not a full vine necessarily. All right. Love that. That is so fun. All right. Let's take a look at questions. Let's answer some questions. Christy says, I'm new to this and have your first brush set. Love the quarter inch dagger. Obsessed. Love your energy and your heart for others. Thank you so much. Um, Y'all, it just inspire me. I am, I never feel more alive. I feel very alive when I'm with my children that, 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 yeah, they, uh, yeah, I have to be, I have to be on my toes, but I never feel quite this alive as when I'm painting with you, my dear community, my friends, because you just shake me up and fire me up and we have good fun, don't we? <laughs> Let's take a look. Um, Miracle agrees with same. I'm going to say it wrong now. Sama. Sama. Oh my gosh. What is wrong with me? My brain, my brain. You just have, to, I hope you forgive me. Um, let's see how light fast are they? Great question. Okay. So, um, the, these are made overseas. These are made in China. I worked with a small family facility, um, manufacturing facility, and they use the blue wool scale. And um, the only, so the red and the yellow, so this red and this yellow are like the least light fast. The rest are really good in terms of light fastness. Um, when I reviewed all of the documentation, um, I would equate the I believe it's on a scale eight is the best. I would equate the red and the yellow to be like mid. So you're talking like a, probably like a four. Now you mix them with more light fast colors in the set. They're going to become more light fast um, in general. There's science and chemistry there that could prevent that. But, and also depending on where you are in terms of proximity to the equator. But the rest of the set is gets a, a very good light fast rating. So more towards the eight. Um, but we've got a lot of mixtures here. These are not single pigment. They're the furthest thing from single pigment formulations. So I hope that didn't sound like a wishy-washy answer. But um, what I do recommend, and I honestly do this with all of my work that I sell, we do um, an, a UV spray. Um, and then we do recommend we put it right in the package with the artwork. We recommend that folks frame the artwork. If they're going to frame and hang it in a room, that's going to, you know, potentially get sunlight. We recommend, um, UV glass, like true view. I think it's called true view is the, one of the most well-known ones, a UV protectant. Um, and of course any artwork, whether you're using light fast paint or not, um, it's recommended to not put your artwork in full, you know, sun exposure. That's just like a no, no in general. Like, I don't care if you're using the most light fast pigment pigment on the planet. So, um, that is where we're at. So yeah, fluorescents are notorious for not being light fast, super light fast. Um, and then the red is definitely, uh, less light fast as well. All right. I'm going in and creating a happy accident that kind of negates the accident part of that, but that's okay. Just lovely. Look at that. I'm off camera there. I realized I'm loading up the number 12 light friends. Like, look, I got three brushes in my hands with my matching nails, a little plug for my matching nails. Yeah. But I'm loading that up with a very juicy wet brush and just tapping lightly when you're doing spatter. The more water you have on your brush, the bigger your spatter marks are going to be, all right? The less water you have on your brush, the smaller they're going to be. So I'll show you that example. I'm blotting a little, I'm hitting harder, and I'm getting like a fine spray spatter, all right? So that's a little spatter lesson for you. Let's head to questions. <laughs> yes, Nicole, great point. The fluorescent yellow is like, whoa, 
but but if you start mixing it with the other colors it just makes them all brighter and prettier amen exactly you get it i feel seen thank you jamie b take my money oh you're sweet but no i love that christy always has something up her sleeve to share with us i do kelly um what we need to do a giveaway we need to do a giveaway friends this giveaway is going to be fun i have been going through my collection um, of, of watercolors that I've amassed since I was like six years old. I'm not kidding. And I have shockingly, yeah, right, been finding that I have some doubles. I have repeats of things. I have been sent free things that I've been asked to try that have in some way overlapped what I already own and so on and so forth. And I have been con collecting this little treasure trove of goodies. And we're talking like Roman Schmall paint pans. We're talking like, um, I've got some Rosa watercolors. I've got some really cool pens and really cool pencils um, that I have enough of and that I feel like I want to share. So this giveaway is going to be for a little um, Christy in Watercolor Land grab bag. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's figure out, Kelly, what we want to do for that giveaway and how we want to how we want to um, determine a winner. Kelly will go ahead and I will look for that announcement in comments and we will get on with that giveaway. Friends, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to um, go ahead and work on these stems. I want to get these stems sharpened up a bit. I am going to use the triple zero. I'm not sure it's going to work the way that I hope. Um, I may go to the cat's tongue, but we're going to give it a try because I do want to keep these fine. But yeah, that's going to work. I'm loading up with a good amount, probably about 70% paint, 30% water, and that's giving me a nice, strong line. And I'm just using kind of a green mixture that I love. Use what you have. Use what you love. That's working out really nicely. Look at that. I am bracing myself with my pinky on the paper. Closest birthday or a trivia question. Let's do a trivia question, Cal. Um, all right. Let me think of a trivia question. Okay, I've got one. You ready for it? Friends, get ready. We're about, this is for our live crew only. Um, sorry, Team Replay. Everybody get ready. Kelly's going to watch for who the first one is to get this correct. All right, let's do this. Oh, 33rd wedding anniversary tomorrow. Happy anniversary. Okay, so. Trivia question to win the Christy in Watercolor Land grab bag is, my daughter's middle name is uh, after a mythical creature. What is that mythical creature? My daughter's middle name is after a mythical creature. What is the name of that mythical creature? Oh, y'all are good. <laughs> that was too easy, but that's okay. That's okay. Kelly, Frosty Girl got it. My my daughter's middle name is Phoenix. Her first mama chose that name, and I was in love immediately. Phoenix represents rising from the ashes, uh, and yeah, I recently painted a phoenix. And uh, she's got a Phoenix tapestry hanging in her, her room. Um, I got my hand in all that spatter, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be okay with it. So Frosty Girl, I'll just need you to email email us hello at christyrice.com. Let us know your shipping address and we will get that out to you ASAP. Do give us some grace because we are kind of overwhelmed right now with palette orders, but we will get it out as soon as humanly possible. And uh, hopefully when you receive everything, go ahead and make some art with it and tag us and let, let us know what you created with it. So 
All right, stick around, friends, because we're going to do, we are going to do some more giveaways for sure. Ooh, Griffin. Kelly had a dog named Griffin. Wait. Yes. Yeah. Griffin. That was his name, right, Kel? That's a good name. All right, cool. Love it. All right. I'm continuing on with the stems on these cherries, bracing my hand on the paper with the pink, my pinky finger. We have a lot going on on the page now. So you kind of have to, I had to like figure out where I needed that stem to pop out. So it looked like it was continuing its natural curve. But this triple zero brush is working beautifully for these stems. Yes, Corgi Griffin. Yes. Sweet Griffin. Oh. All right. The stem on this one is coming out of the middle. And we're going to carry it up here. Well, that's fun. I want to add a little darkness and intensity to that. I've got a little dark just whatnot on the palette from painting earlier this week. And we're going to, ooh, I think my daughter's getting in trouble. I hear some, hear some hollering out there in the homestead. Ooh, what a girly do. My mom watches the kiddos. All right, I'm going to add some darkness to this one. I'm not loving the curve of this one as much, but it's all right. Just me being persnickety. And some shadow to that. Actually, we need more shadow there. My brush ran out of paint. And cherries have this little kind of like notch at the top of their stem. So I, I like to highlight that when I can, when it makes sense. Um or a nubbin or a nodule. I don't know what to call it, but you know what I mean. I dropped a brush. What did I drop? I think I dropped my eighth inch. Oh, she's all the way under the table. There's no way I can grab that right now. It's not happening. Nope. We just won't be using an eighth inch dagger anymore. I don't know why I made this stem coming out from the cherry like I did, but I guess it works. You got to talk yourself through the scarier moments where you're like, you know, wishing you hadn't made a decision that you made and you're having to contend with it. You got to talk yourself through it. And part of that talk needs to be like, keep yourself calm and be like, all right, I wish I'd done this different, but we're going to, we're going to just flow with it. It's okay. It's all right. Right. Triple zero. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could explain with what a triple zero means. Um, brush sizing is so arbitrary. A triple zero in one brand is going to be different. It's a way, I, what I understand is that, you know, you've got like your classic, it's almost like a negative number in a way. If somebody understands this better than me, please chime in and correct me. Call me out publicly. I don't care. So, and I mean that kindly, not like sass sassily, sassily. Anywho, you've got your like number one, your number two, your number three, and those are what you would expect. They like, you know, like for example, this is a number two round right here. This is a number two round. So a triple zero, see how much smaller it is than the number, number two round here, triple zero here. So it's almost like brush sizing's version of a negative number to to kind of denote it getting smaller yeah hopefully that makes sense agree disagree let me know in comments and you know my manufacturers overseas so like the way they approach it too um you know there's always a lot of debate they're like you want to call it what and i'm like i know but i'm in the u.s okay <laughs> yeah. So funny. Continuing with these stems. When I go quiet, you know that I have like entered the zone. Yeah. All right. All right. Love your <laughs> cherry nubbins. <laughs> They're referred to as miniature brushes, I think, in general terms. They go down through 0102 to triple zero from memory. Yeah. 
I, I've called them detail brushes, miniature brushes. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Honestly, brush sizing is just as ridiculous as women's jean sizes. Yeah, you can say that again. Yep, absolutely. Very arbitrary. All right. I want to add some interest to some of these cherries. I'm sticking with the triple zero and I'm going to just go in and I'm going to add some fine curved cross hatching on the edges here in places, just a little bit of detailing. I might even, yeah, I'm going to firm up some of the silhouette and get some cross hatching going. Isn't that pretty? Just a little, something following the curve of the fruit be nice if I wasn't off camera for that one wouldn't that have been nice I'm gonna go in here and add some I love adding fine fine shadows with this brush let me show you how I added a little bit of blue I'm thoroughly rinsing the brush got too much blue on there I'm gonna blot some of that up and then we'll get back to what I'm trying to explain. All right. Thoroughly rinsed. Go back in with a wet brush and just move that color around. It is such a wonderful way to do precision shading. Right? Look at that. So much control. You can, you can flood. You can lift, you can do all the same things. I don't want you to think of this brush just as a detail brush in terms of adding detail. You can manipulate in all the same ways with this brush. And once you realize that, you, you're you gonna have yourself an aha moment, okay? You're just gonna, trust me. Too much water on there. Lift some of that away. And lift, circle around, do that. There's so much you can do with this baby brush. I'm gonna zoom down in and do some work in an area here so you can really see. All right, I'm gonna work in here and I'm gonna use the triple zero and I'm gonna try to start to differentiate the leaf and some of the shadows in this cherry. I'm going to drop some purple in here right between, right next to where the stem meets the flesh of the cherry. Just a little, little V. Rinse thoroughly, blot. I don't want to go in there with like a dripping wet brush and then blend it out. Rinse because I'm starting to carry too much color. Blend it out. Look at that precision. Let's continue with some of that. All right. We'll go right here where this leaf meets the cherry. Let me get back some of the separation. And we're going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of water. Blot. We don't want too much water. Gotta have just the right amount of water or else you're going to just get like a baby puddle. And blend and blot. See how I'm blotting? And then lift back towards it's like contrast detailing but minuscule contrast detailing can you use these for gouache yes gouache gouache and acrylic they're nylon they're going to hold up to the the heavier body of gouache definitely acrylic absolutely acrylic absolutely that's how they were designed great question all right i'm going to go down in here and help that leaf pop as well i'm adding a little red I may not even add water here. It may not need it. Mm, look at that. Rinse thoroughly. Blot. A little bit of blending down here. More water on there. 
just dropped a little droplet on there. Look at that. Isn't that great? Look at that differentiation now. So good. So good! All right, let's get some of that cross hatching detailing in there, a little bit of red, and then I drug my brush through just a, a hint of purple, not enough water. Just a hint, just making some lines that are following the contour, and then I'm going down. This is just like a contoured cross hatching. Gorgeous. Let's go over and help that leaf pop. A little bit of purple going right where the flesh of the cherry meets the leaf. Even into that shine a little bit. Rinse thoroughly, blot lightly, add some water, blot the color off. You don't wanna to carry too much color out into the cherry or you're gonna change, you're gonna start changing the color of your cherry and you don't want that, right? I'm gonna carry some of this out into the shine. Can y'all see that detail? Is that helpful for you to see how I'm working that out? Let me know in comments if this is helpful. Are you seeing the nuance of what's happening here? Let me know, let me know. I am continuing to lift here and pushing back towards the shadow color I added. I wanna intensify this separation. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. There we go. That rinse, 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 big rinse. There we go. You see that? Is that helpful? New to this and wondering how you keep a steady hand when detailing. I would think I'd smear the wet paint with my wrist on the page. I was smearing. Look at, I smeared my... I, I was, and my hand, can you see my hand? It's got schmear on it. So um, it happens. We deal with it. I put down a paper towel. I'm going to probably add um, some leaves here later on. I'm going to continue some of these golden leaves down here to cover some of this up, add more spatter later on, and you'll never know what happened. So I don't worry about it too much, but you can put down, as long as the area is dry, you can... Put down a paper towel to rest your hand on. Like these are all dry. So I can safely and confidently do that. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh. It works well. Okay. I'm going to actually add a little shape to this leaf. I'm going to go along the outer edge of this leaf with a bright saturated red. Watch what I'm going to do here. Press drag and lift along the edge. Then I'm gonna rinse. This is still with the triple zero, friends. I could do a whole video about using these tiny brushes um, in different ways. It's not just to add little little marks. It's not just for stamens. It's not just for, for um, you know, pollen in a flower. No, 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 no. You're selling your artistic self short if that's all you use these for. Going along the edge now, the damp edge of where I just added that red and with a little bit of blue. And now I'm blending that out, but I'm making sure not to blend too much. I don't wanna change the color of that leaf. I just want it to feel like a shadow. I want a little more dimension. I'm blending this out very lightly. Look at that. Look at that. So good. All right, let me get caught up with some questions. <laughs> I need to paint. It's been too many days. Illnesses. Only thing about watercolor is in a bed sick. It's not friendly for bed painting. It's not. Unless you do dry brush. You could do dry brush. Any plans on offering a larger palette with more colors? I have thought about it. Um, it's not in the near term. I've got, I'm going to be launching um, the, just give you a peek. Many of you have seen this. I'm going to be launching the collapsible painter's pot very soon with the little Paint Joy carabiner. 
And then um, the travel brush is launching as early as, as I'm popping it on Amazon probably next week. Um, and then we have, what do we have coming up after that? Um, oh, friends, can I reveal to you? There's always fun stuff to reveal here. I mentioned I'm revealing the empty, pa launching the empty palettes. They're coming. I'm not sure how soon though. Um, I am making a stamp set, y'all. I am making a set of stamps for swatching. And I know there are some out there on the market. Um, my intention isn't to copy what they're doing. Um, I'm just, I, I've got my own ideas for that as, as I've been de developing my own swatch uh, sheets. And I was like, you know what? I Of course, I'm going to provide the downloads for the swatch sheets. But at the same time, like, it's hard to print on watercolor paper. And I believe if you're going to finally swatch, like I'm finally swatching my whole collection, um, you know, I want you to do it on the paper you want to do it on. I don't want you to have to do it on thin paper that will fit through your printer. And I don't want you to have to make an extra trip up to a Kinko's, you know? So I'm coming up with my own stamp set um, with different options for swatching. And it's pretty exciting. I'm working with the manufacturer as we speak. So that is coming soon. I'm just having way too much fun with this one cher cherry here. Yeah, the, I'm excited for the collapsible water thing. <laughs> How do I know when I'm not considered a beginner? Ah, I have a video about this. I will link it below later on. Um, it's a video about being an ex beginner. And here is how you know, my friend. Is there a waterproofing to go with the stamp so they don't smear it when swatching? Um, I believe there's already some on the market. I, I'm not developing one right now, but um, I believe there's already some out there. Um, I, I've been looking into that. So, uh, but you know what? If there isn't a good one, I promise you I'll get one manufactured. There we go. Seriously. No, no worries. I'll make it happen. Um, what was I saying? I completely forgot what I was saying. Kelly, what was I saying? Oh my gosh. Are you having fun friends? Is this little moment of me like getting down and dirty with the triple zero helpful? All right. Did you have an aha moment with the triple zero and the shading capability? Let me know. I want to hear all about it. all about it. I'm just adding in, I'm working some shading into this other cherry. Christy calls us X beginners. Thank you. Okay. So I did a video. Thank you. Somebody reminding what the heck I was saying. And basically I talk about the fact that you can consider yourself an X beginner. I mean, you're always going to be beginning something, right? I mean, here's where I get kind of existential, but the reality is, is when you feel like you have a uh, great control over the basic techniques, you're wet on wet, you're wet on dry, you're wet on damp, you're, you're, um, you know, you're flooding, you're ombre, all of that, right? When you feel like you're having a good handle on that and you notice yourself starting to use those techniques together in different ways. So maybe wet on wet and then flooding all of that wetness on the page and then, you know, wet on wet again and then you know, uh, um, spatter over top or any number of combinations, right. That could happen between the basic, the basic classic, um, watercolor techniques. That's when I consider you moving on from just the pure beginner stage. And I cover that at length in that video. Um, so yeah. So when you start using techniques compound compounded together, is I feel like when that's happening, then you're, you're an ex beginner. You're, you're leveling up. You're ready to find your new devil, new level, new devil, right? You're ready to find your new challenge. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Fun, 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 fun. aha moment of leaving white space for light point and also, oh crud, where did that go? 
uh, leaving white space for a uh, light point and also using your wild yellow for the same. Nice. Love that. So helpful. Thank you. Sometimes my paintings need that extra something and the liner brush would help. The liner, the triple zero, absolutely. Ex-beginner. That might be where I'm at. Yep. Absolutely. Beginner, when do we know when we are advanced? Ooh, these are tough questions. And I shy away from like giving them a firm answer because what they when we're when we're trying to categorize ourselves, we, we tend to be kind of like backing ourselves into a corner. It creates a lot of sometimes stress for people, undue stress, right? Um Advanced is when you, you are often getting reliable results and when you are able to, and this is just my absolute pull it out of my sock opinion here, right? Um, when you are able to kind of paint on the fly with success, when you're able to paint things from memory without a reference photo with success, um, and then, you know, who determines that success? That's why these questions are so hard to answer, right? Uh, where you feel satisfied, I guess, is the point. Um, when you are able to compound, use techniques together um, consistently, reliably. And also, I think when you are able to get the effect that you intended before you put brush to paper, where you're actually able to create the thing that you imagined creating in the way that you planned to create it, that's a, a really good sign too that you are advanced. Hopefully that helps. Added a lot of goldenness over there and that'll get resolved as the painting continues, but just wanted to add a little bit more over there. We can see where we're at. Ooh, fun. This could just be a whole page of cherries, cherry fun. I'm going to lift some of this out because this I used two very opaque watercolors here. Just do some lifting to give this some airiness back. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Watch how this is going to lift. I love lifting with the cat's tongue. Gives you such precision. Watch how this transforms. I'm just being patient, rinsing my brush, lifting, blotting, rinsing. You can do an upstroke as well, right? But this is positive lifting. I cover this in the X beginner video. We often think is lifting only as a, you know, a way to correct errors, but lifting can also be a very um, intentional um, positive technique where you're actually trying to create a unique texture, which is exactly what's happening here. Isn't that lovely? I'm going to do a little bit of it here as well, because we got very opaque here. Let's see what happens. There's some green underneath. The base layer of this leaf is green. So I don't want to go too wild because it could get a little murky, but I'm not feeling it yet. And then we could flood in some of that beautiful creamy yellow that I removed from this leaf and just brighten it up a little. All right, all right, here we go. That flowing line is so calligraphic. It is a little bit, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's do one more giveaway, Kelly. We'll go ahead and um, give away a brush set, the new brush set. And let's do another trivia question. Now I have to think of it. I've got one. All right. 
Everybody, I'm going to give you a moment to get prepared to listen for this question as I continue my positive lifting here to make these golden leaves glow. All right, friends, my husband and I, my family, my whole family, we love to travel to a particular part of this country. What national park is that area nearby? We travel there at least twice a year. I love painting there. This is to win a brush set, the Free From Fear brush set. Go ahead, give your best guess. We travel here often uh, and it is near a national park. What is the name of that national park? Uh-oh, Irie's getting in trouble. I can hear her getting yelled at. She's getting yelled at. Uh-oh. All right, let's see. Kelly. <laughs> okay, Frosty Girl, we're going to go on. I hope you understand. We're going to go on to the next, to the next first correct answer just because you already won. Yeah, correct. But good for you, Frosty Girl. Um, uh, I don't know how to say the name. Akshower. Akshower. Uh, Zion is correct. It's Zion National Park. Yes, absolutely. Y'all are good. Y'all pay attention when I talk, apparently. I appreciate that. I do. <laughs> Kidding. I mean, you know what I mean. Adding a little fluorescent here, friends, just to liven that up. Ooh, so fun. So fun. Zion is the correct answer. Joshua tree. I've been to Joshua tree. Really fun. <laughs> All right. Send an email to hello at christyrice.com with your name and address so we can ship out your brush set for you. Um, Frosty girl says, I was just watching some of your first videos. So cool to see your journey. Oh my gosh. Those first videos. I'm like a completely different person. Like literally I'm like physically I'm like half of myself emotionally, I am like a shell of myself. Like you can really see how I've evolved if you go back and watch my old videos, but it's good. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with me then. Um, I have just truly become who I was meant to be over the last few years and, you know, just wish it hadn't taken so long, but I'm glad I'm here now and I'm glad you're here with me. And I am lifting the tiniest line here. I am lifting out of that stem and it's working. I'm lifting with the, the very tip of the cat's tongue and it's working for the love. I'm getting such precision lifting. It's fantastic. Look at that. The thing I love about positive lifting when you're not trying to like correct a mistake necessarily is you can get such smoothness out of an area if you want that right? You can really, really smooth out an area. I mean, look what I accomplished here. When I first laid down the color, I had used my peach, which is super opaque, and my pink and the fluorescent, and it was heavy and it was so much coverage. Um, but then the lifting, oof, gorgeous. Congrats on your arrival, Christy. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Sama says, um, your journey is helping us evolve too. I've learned so much from you this last year. Or so I appreciate that. Um, you email hello at christyrice.com. Just scroll back in the comments and you'll see um, all the information there. Hello at christyrice.com. Oh, thank you, Mom Nagel. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> It takes the time it takes for purpose. You let yourself be joyful. Indeed, it does. It does. Indeed. All right, friends, this has been such a blast. I'm going to go ahead and take some photos of this. Check out Instagram stories. Kelly, could you pop up? I think there's an Instagram uh, banner so people have that information. I'm going to give Kelly a moment to get that up. But friends, um, head over to Instagram later today so you can check out I might, if I have some time, thank you.
Kelly, I'm going to continue working on this and evolve it a little bit. I seriously, my aha moment was just remembering how versatile a triple zero can be. Um, friends, continue painting with me, whether I am on screen live or you're watching a video. And I would ask you to, one of the most enlightening things you can do is to share your work. So pop onto Instagram. That's a great place to share. Um, not so much TikTok because it's just different. Um, and tag me at Christy the Painter. Share the work that you're creating. Share it with the community. You share with me. You bet your butt I'm going to share it back out. I'm going to comment on it. I want to see what you're creating. And, and not just with my brushes. Not just with my paint. No. I want to see what you're creating, period. Okay. Um, Kelly, let's go back to my face. Let's go back to my face uh, because I feel like you can see the heart in my face, not in my hands doing this. Um, but seriously, it's so empowering to share your work and to share it consistently and confidently, even when maybe you don't feel as confident inside. So head to Instagram at Christy the Painter. Um, this was so fun. If you had a good time, head in the comments right now and say yes, give us some emojis, whatever it is. And please don't forget to go ahead and give this video a boop. Friends, it's the thumbs up icon. If you're on the TVs, I don't think you can boop, but it's okay. I feel your boops in general, even if you can't actually boop. And that's a like, in case you were wondering. So love this community. Love y'all so much, seriously. Uh, this is the joy of my life painting with you besides my children, but they drive me nuts. You don't drive me nuts. No, I'm kidding. The joy of my life. Appreciate you so much. Woo! Look at those. Look at those emojis. I love it. I love it. Oh, I just woke up the dogs. You hear that with my woo. <laughs> All right, friends. Um, just get in it, get in there, get your happy painting on and I will see you next time. Uh, mwah. Bye.